It is no secret that the British Broadcasting Corporation (BBC), the national broadcaster of the United Kingdom, is the epitome of sinister propaganda. The BBC considers itself a champion of civil liberties and the forerunner of media fraternity across the world. Its imperial mindset is reflected in all of its reporting and works. The so-called media firm and apparently a propaganda machine, the BBC, becomes uncomfortable when there is anything good happening around India. It is unable to digest the fact that India has become a way better country than its former colonizers. The malicious way of working and monetary foul play have now landed it in the clutches of the same India. Namaste and welcome to TFI Post. I'm your host Parush Gupta. Let's begin. As per the reports, the Enforcement Directorate, that is ED, has lodged a case against BBC India under the Foreign Exchange Management Act (FIMA) for an alleged foreign exchange violation. According to officials, the ED has questioned six employees, including one of the directors of BBC India, since the case was registered two weeks ago. The ED has requested documents and statements from some company executives under the provisions of FIMA as part of an investigation in potential foreign direct investment violations by the company. The investigation is ongoing, and another employee of the BBC was called in for questioning yesterday. Notably, the Income Tax Department also conducted surveys at BBC's New Delhi and Mumbai premises in February, alleging non-compliance with transfer pricing rules and significant diversion of profits. These surveys, which take place only at business premises, are usually a precursor to a search and seizure operation. During the surveys, officials examined the books of accounts, bank accounts, cash, stock, and non-valuable documents. The focus of the surveys was to investigate whether BBC had manipulated prices for unauthorized benefits, including tax advantages, and was deliberately non-compliant with transfer pricing rules. The department also claimed that BBC had deliberately diverted a significant amount of profits and did not follow the arm's length arrangement in the allocation of profit. It is not the first time that BBC's illegal financial activities are exposed. During his tenure as BBC's head of employee tax, David Smith admitted that the company had awarded around 25,000 contracts to nearly 1,500 workers in a freelance capacity, outside the official records. However, he maintained that the organization was in compliance with the legal requirements. Indian law enforcement authorities have revealed BBC's profit diversion activities and deliberate violation of transfer pricing rules. The illicit finance dealing is more suspicious in India, as the BBC had earlier released a contentious propaganda documentary against PM Modi, which has led to calls for its ban due to its consistent promotion of anti-India sentiments. During the hunt for Amrit Pal, a Khalistani terrorist, BBC Punjabi was also banned as the network has promoted anti-India activities and radical elements. Its terrorist sympathy was clearly visible when in the UK it released another documentary of Shamima Begum known as The Jihadi Bride. This led to a resentment among people in the UK who threatened the BBC with giving up their subscription. The BBC is facing charges because of its filthy journalism and imperialistic habit of undermining the rule of law. It is interesting to note that when ED had registered a case on the BBC, an interview of Elon Musk with a BBC journalist became a sensation on the internet. The interview shows how this propaganda machine manipulates facts and carries them forward by posing them as questions. In the interview, a BBC journalist questioned Musk about the rise of hate speech on Twitter. To this, Musk replied, and I quote, what hate speech are you talking about? I mean, you use Twitter. Do you see a rise in hate speech? Just a personal anecdote. I don't. Moreover, Musk asked him to give at least a single example of hate speech on Twitter to which the journalist started fumbling and was unable to answer anything concrete. Clearly, because it was just a manipulative question that has no basis, just an intention to sell propaganda against Twitter. When the journalist tried to dodge the situation, he requested Musk to move forward to another question. But Musk interrupted him again and said, hang on a second, you said you have seen some more hateful content, but you cannot name a single example, not even a single one. Musk went forward to say, you just lied to the journalist. In another question, the journalist asked Musk about Twitter's banning of a BBC documentary on PM Modi, to which Musk sincerely replied that whether the rules are strict or lenient, Twitter always follows them as the company believes in the rule of law. This was a tight slap on BBC's face which never gave a damn about the law. What it thinks is right, it propagates. And if the law is violated by that propagation, it is that the rule should be blamed. Wow BBC, 
you just nailed it by becoming the British Misinformation Corporation. Musk actually set an example of how firms should follow the rule of law while operating in any country. Companies like Facebook and Google, among others, have been at the forefront regarding the legal policies. They have time and again opposed the policies of the government of India, be it on privacy or market capturing. In line with that, Google was fined Rs 936 crores last year. The Competition Commission of India asked Google to cease and desist from practicing policies that gave it power to abuse its dominant position in running the Play Store. So when Twitter, which is the most widely used social media platform, can follow the rule of law, what is the big deal with BBC? Actually, the problem is that the BBC wants to sabotage the Indian media perspective. It just wants to subdue Indian minds. It wants them to see what the BBC wants them to see. Listen to what the BBC wants them to listen to. Hopefully, Indian governance and administration is following the strict rule of law when the BBC is concerned.